Hi, my name's Maddie, and this is how God woke me up with Jesus. I'm going to be reading from this script that I wrote. Before I begin, I want to encourage you to ask me any questions that you might have about what I'm going to say after I say it. I won't hold back on answering, and I'm completely open to you. No subject is off limits. <sighs> now to begin. I once was lost and now I'm found. <laughs> and while it would be easy to leave it at that, I'm called to explain more thoroughly just how I got here. My story starts like many others, with plenty of illness, grief, and disillusionment along the way. Before I stopped caring about my spirit, my father died suddenly. It was like a final blow. I was tired of being served crap in life so I decided to serve myself with vodka. This on top of the ridiculous amount of weed and tobacco I was smoking. Since I always enjoyed a good pairing, it seemed appropriate to take up tap dancing while becoming a professional alcoholic. To complement this odd comp uh, combination, I would spend my time watching people play games on the internet. I would pretend that they liked me. Maybe they did, who knows? It was preferable to having real friends who would inevitably decide I was too much. My family members had their own lives with kids. I was too much trouble, I'm sure. <laughs> My husband didn't know what to do with me other than just keep me complacent. He had his demons too, just not as aggressive as mine. I started to become very obsessive with drinking, dancing, and strangers on the internet and my compulsive behaviors, of which there were many. I lost my passion for playing video games a while back, so instead I searched for content on YouTube that would numb me and hypnotize me. I would specifically try to plant keywords into the ever-learning algorithm, which became way too able to predict what and who I wanted to watch. Even the music suggestions began to know my state of mind before I did. One day, I found an attractive female streamer who I looked up to and was inspired by. The thumbnail that drew me in said, Hypno something says watch. And I did. I clicked. That says a lot about my state of mind at the time. She was flooded with seemingly positive interactions from all kinds of people. That was when I started to upload videos of my dancing. I've made most of those private now. Some of them I put up just for perspective. I knew I could never achieve her level of charisma and I couldn't even smile. I tried. All the people I watched online and interacted with shared common interests. Video games, scary stuff, food, aesthetic use of color, and varying degrees of perversity. I definitely had a preferred type. Between them all, I always had someone to keep me company, always a corner in which I could seek acknowledgement, praise, or attention, however shallow and meaningless it all was. It was, after all, the only way that I thought I could get those things. I would share my dancing videos and obsess over who might be watching them and what they might think. Not many did watch, but I savored what little attention I got, even if it was negative or insulting. I just needed something, anything. I was really desperate. Even if I wasn't entertaining or desirable, maybe someone would just care a little bit and I would feel it somehow. One night in September of 2019, in 2019, I got what I had been asking for. I left my door open and I was vulnerable to other humans, demons, and demon-possessed humans alike. At this point, I was constantly under the heavy influence from alcohol and weed. I'd been summoning abyssal entities through dance, self-hypnosis, and other weird things for months. I changed myself to be pleasing for strangers on the internet to no avail until that fateful night in mid-September. That was when I found a man streaming on YouTube who looked remarkably similar to my husband. He made a point of displaying his liking for me immediately. He made me feel so important and desired 
and asked me all kinds of questions that nobody ever asked me. He seemed to know more about me than I told him. He love-bombed me. He pretended to be obsessed with me. He showed me his zombified lover who treated him like royalty. He told me he refused oral sex from her because he was too, too spent from fantasizing over me. Right. I watched his visually, pain, visually painful streams on YouTube that led to a burst blood vessel in my eye. I let him manipulate me into doing something that I would never do. I committed adultery. I let him have power over me. I wanted him to tell me what to do, when to drink, when not to drink, whatever. It was disgusting. He lied that he loved me and he only wanted to own me and break me like a toy. He said he was currently in the process of getting another woman away from her abusive boyfriend and that he would take me in as well should I leave my husband. He twisted my reality in so many ways and then he mocked me in a blog post. He conquered me and nearly destroyed me, but I forgive him. I feared my husband was trying to kill me. After all, he was supplying me with deadly amounts of liquor. I understand and forgive my husband for this and he has also forgiven me for so much. I got all kinds of paranoid ideas about my husband of over 10 years. Could he have contributed to the demise of my parents? Did he have something to do with my mysterious illness from a couple years ago? I went completely nuts. I ended up checking into a mental facility so I could get some sleep and feel safe. And that did not happen. They didn't let me sleep when I got there and refused to give me sleeping medication, saying they wanted my schedule to get back to normal. They made me take pills that I didn't want or need. I had already been awake for a couple days and dealing with psychosis from alcohol cessation. They didn't believe anything that I told them. Why would they? I sounded crazy. They wouldn't let me leave. I finally slept the third and final day that I was there and I only got out of that place because a judge deemed that I was not a danger to myself or others. I went in there because I felt unsafe, not because I wanted to hurt myself. A more detailed telling of that experience along with that of the next few months leading to realizing God will have to be for another day. Although again, feel free to ask questions about that. In the following months, October 2019, October 2019 to March 2020, I continued to dance, only now even more purposeful in my ritualistic intent. I even made a sacrificial dance video using fake blood on Halloween. I wrote, danced, and recorded spells. I cut off the obsessive relationship that got me locked up against my will, but I picked up right where I left off with the other internet strangers whose threat was not obvious to me at the time. I'd stopped drinking but I rationalized my marijuana usage as gentle self-medication. I smoked way too much tobacco as well. I felt compelled to drown out both me and God with white noise, loud music, and mindless content. I could only hear the accuser who told me that I was worthless, unworthy, scared, sad, and alone. I left the house or had visitors less times than I can count on my hands in those seven months. I felt so ugly and broken like rancid garbage and the sun burned my skin and blinded me if I did go outside. I didn't smile, I hardly smiled. I didn't cry and I was numb. My obsession grew with another man who feigned interest while he mocked me. I hung on his every word, I let him command me, I dressed for him, I danced for him. It was a cruel farce and I was a possessed puppet, the unwitting star of my own dark satire. It took me over three decades to realize that God was there all along. During the week of my awakening, beginning March 9th, 2020, the Holy Spirit came into me very suddenly. I was ready to change during that full moon period. I opened my eyes to see and my ears were willing to listen. I knew that it was time to seek answers and be completely open. I was on my last thread. <laughs> I 
I went down every avenue from divination to demonology and anywhere in between and outside. I had been traveling the abyss of my black soul for months now. I was determined to solve this nonsensical equation. I didn't solve it though. It solved me. I noticed Satan. The accuser noticed me noticing it as well. And I shut it out. I let myself be quiet and still in my mind and I heard the other voice instead. The whispering one that I had been drowning out, it was God. He showed me every beautiful and vile thing that I could possibly imagine. He physically touched me in the way I always craved. I wept and I laughed. It was all so simple yet incomprehensible at the same time. He had an answer for every question that matters. He was not what I expected God to be. He was pure, perfect love. He told me that I was Jesus. <laughs> I am. We all are. He's us. We are blood of his blood and flesh of his flesh. We're the ocean of his salty tears and his flowing river, which cleanses us. We are his child and his sacrifice. Everything he has done has been for us. We are his, imper we are his perfectly imperfect masterpiece. After God introduced himself, he humbled me many times over to strengthen, to strengthen my faith. Here are the most relevant details. He wanted me to obey his every command without question, so I did. The time of surrender, culminated in me walking barefoot, carrying two decorative swords in either hand, one metal, the other a plastic Jedi sword, and my big book of shame clutched to my chest to the church directly behind our house. I laid down my swords in, in the parking lot, put my book of shame down on a chair behind the church stage curtain and went onto the stage. <laughs> Excuse me. There was a piano and microphone empty and ready with baffled musicians standing on either side. <clears throat> I sang praises to God into the microphone and played the piano. It was beyond ridiculous. After that, I stayed for a moment as people began to file into the church. I had gotten there before the actual service had begun. When God told me it was time to leave, I made my way to the front door and asked a gentleman to burn the hairband I was wearing. I bade him come to the parking lot with me and find a proper place to do it. I saw a rusty metal pit and said he should burn it there. I told him it was very important. I wonder if he did it. I then said I needed to return home. He took off his shoes and gave me his socks. He made sure I would go straight home and I did. I slept for a few hours until the police knocked on the door to check on me. They returned the valuable possessions I had left outside our back gate and my book of shame and my somehow now broken metal sword. I then told him I needed a ride to the ER as God told me he wanted me to go there. While there, I witnessed true kindness, confusion, a demonic possession and palpable fear of the unknown thing, COVID-19 that was coming our way. As I was having my blood drawn, God told me the cure was in my blood. It is. The blood of the Christ is our cure. After leaving the hospital, God pointed me to some pretty alarming parts of the Bible. It's important to note that I have never read the Bible except as a child in Sunday school. Even then, I got sent into the hall for asking questions, so very limited and unwanted knowledge. Previous in that, previously in that week, God crafted me a message that said, resolution lies in starry eyes. I wondered about it. He told me to look for the answer in my book of shame. Inside that book, it's actually a big fat binder, is a calendar of my husband's family. I looked in it. There was a picture of my nieces wearing LED glasses that resembled stars in the night sky. I immediately texted my sister-in-law. She contacted the priest to whom I confessed all my shame. Also in front of his wife, the priest, my sister-in-law and my husband. He was the one who baptized me. 
The baptism happened right before all the social distancing stuff came into play. It was perfect. Ever since then, I've been on a mission to strengthen my relationship with God through Jesus in me and Jesus through God in me. It's a continual process of purification, becoming less poisonous to my soul and the souls of my brothers and sisters, our collective soul. My earthly vessel and our mother earth, the sacred temples, which from within spring new life every day, slowly heal with every decision I make that is godly. I'm a work in progress. I battle every day and I love it. At the same time, I finally understand what it means to be happy. I am profoundly moved by our pain and sadness as people. It weighs heavily on me and it motivates me to try and explain God and how wrong I was about him. It's like the movie, The Matrix. I see us all sleeping in our pods and it seems so difficult to wake up even one person. All the while, he tells me that everyone will wake up regardless of what choices I make. He's infinite chess moves ahead and he knows my will, even though it's free. It blows my mind. He also tells me the choices we make all matter, even though they're predestined. It's like pondering black holes, which I used to do often. I do get frustrated sometimes asking him, why can't you just do this with everyone? And moreover, why did you choose me? <laughs> Not that I'm ungrateful. Of all the things he tells me, no specific answer for that one. <laughs> Although I do have some ideas about it. At the same time that it makes me feel like a special little snowflake, I'm also like, why wouldn't you, our all-powerful God, do this thing with a couple world leaders and billionaires or something? You know, people that actually have power to change things? He gives me a definite answer here. And that is, they won't shut their mouths long enough to hear me. They're unwilling to search for answers outside their stubborn beliefs, and they're led by selfish interests at this time. Mysterious indeed. Don't get me wrong. I love God on a high, level higher than I ever thought possible. I won't lie, though. It's not an easy road that I commit to travel. I'm not suddenly accepted into some religious group or club. If anything, I'm more ostracized than ever. I am finally able to face the world authentically. In a 20, funny twist of fate, however, people I now know People I have known for a long time now turn further from me, show false sympathy, empathy, or outright mock me. I don't blame anyone for feeling these ways towards me, and if anything, I've been there and I completely understand. If you've listened this far, know that I love you and I pray for us every day, constantly. If we could only all see how much our Father loves us, we would have no trouble loving him back. He's so misrepresented as some abusive and unfeeling parent. Here's a challenge. Seek answers for yourself. Do your own research. I went into deep alternate states through meditation, did pagan rituals and spells, and scoured every dangerous corner I found, delved into every bit of information on spirituality I could come across. And I'm not saying that I recommend these things. It's just what I did and how I got here. And now I am here. I'm no longer terrified or deeply depressed. And I no longer get high to cope with existence. I don't even want to. Words are no longer cheap to me. Hope and joy are not just a state of mind, but a state of being to be shared with others. I am love. It's what I'm made of. Please stop listening to the lies that media and chain religions perpetuate. They only spread Satan's agenda to turn people away from God. But you don't have to take my word for it. Take his. Thank you for listening. Bye.